Hey everyone, this is Mr. Everything, and today I wanted to talk about the iPhone 8 Plus in 2020 on iOS 13, I think it's 13.1.3, but we'll check that. I wanted to do a review. I've had this phone since 2018. It's the closest I've ever had to a new iPhone. It was basically almost brand new when I got it. I got a really good deal. Uh, it definitely was the phone I wanted for years, because usually I when I first got into iPhones, I'd have them years before, like the, the old model. And then this was pretty much right when they were out, but I got it used because I don't like to pay full price. And uh, it's really good, but I was kind of thinking about upgrading, but I just wanted to talk about it because I still use it every day. Uh, so hopefully I can do a good job here. I want to try and be different than a lot of the other people that review phones, but I'm not sure how good I'll do, but I'm going to give it my best. So the first thing I want to do is something that like nobody ever does, and I don't get it, is do a power off and a power on. And hopefully the, you can see it a little, so now I think it's fully shut off, so it took a few seconds. Uh, hopefully the angle is good. I'm, I usually use my phone to record, but I'm using my iPad, and uh, I don't really have, my, my tripod won't hold that, so I'm just have it stacked on boxes, so I don't have the best angle. One thing I've noticed is you have to hold the power button in now to get the, any Apple device to come on. Before you just press it for like a second and it would come on. So I, if anyone's like an Apple fanatic, I'd like to know was that changed in like a software update or is that just built into like the, I don't know, like the BIOS or something to where they're all like that. But you can see, look how quick that opened up. And it's back in and you can see so everything's clear I use this to monitor the RAM I don't know how accurate it is it's just something I've, I've never paid attention to it until iOS 13 to me that already seems like why is it using that much memory you know it has three gigs how can it be using all that when I don't even really have anything going on? I'm not sure if that's an iOS 13 problem or just because everything's more feature packed now, it just takes up more resources. I'm not sure. So let me see what we can. So this is the current software at the time of this filming. And see if there's anything else relevant. So my battery capacity is still at 92%. And one thing I've noticed, it, when I first got the phone, it had 99. So it was basically brand new. Uh, they, the kid sold it to me like right when the uh, 10s Max, or that you know, generation came out. And this was a this is a product red version. I think that came out in like May of the same year because the product red used to come out well after the actual launch of the. Uh, that year, so that was the uh, the eight and the uh, ten, which is kind of confusing because that year they had they continued this style and then they went to the uh, you know notched one, and it went down to ninety eight like within a week. Then it stayed there for months. Then it dropped to ninety five. Now it's down to ninety two, and I'm sure it'll drop down you know eighty seven or like it'll probably be a significant. It usually goes down more than one percent. I've switched to wireless charging. Uh, I got a good wireless charger, so it's just more convenient to lay it next to my bed when I'm just sitting there and I can charge instead of me plugging in and out. I think wireless charging is slower. I think it's 7.5 watts. And when I would charge this, I would use the iPad charger. So it wasn't like the extreme fast charging, it was 12 watt. So I feel like that was maybe easier on the battery. Some people say that wireless charging heats it up too much, but I didn't notice, but I don't seem to get as good of battery life, even though I have most of the capacity. I'm just guessing. So let's open up Instagram. You can see that meaty man. This stud right here, I don't even know what else to say, but you can see how quickly it uh, yeah, opens up. You get a little, don't want to get copyrighted because everything's copyrighted, but you can see it opened up nice and quick. Good. 
the slowest thing here is just going to be my uh, internet. I'm using uh, Mint Mobile, so I'm just going to go ahead and switch to LTE, so that should help speed up any delay when I open certain apps. You can see, like, it's still a very fast phone. To me, it just seems like if there's a problem, it's just maybe the RAM management, which seems to be... I have that problem really bad on uh, iOS or iPad OS on my iPad. I mean, the speakers are still you know, very good for this device. It's probably like one of my favorite albums, and I'm not joking, I actually really like this one. Don't, don't want you to think someone's knocking your trash cans over at home, so. But, I mean, it gets plenty of lots of ringer. It's kind of annoying. So I'll go here and do it here. But it gets plenty loud for me, so, you know, that doesn't matter. It doesn't need to be a new phone for volume. You can see things load. Just the in and out, I mean, it, it's still very powerful device. I believe this was a six core. I can't remember if it was like the Fusion, the A11 maybe. I can check that for you. So it's the Bionic. So I think the Fusion is the older tier that used to be used for the iPad, but I could be wrong. I'm, I'm not an Apple aficionado. I believe this is also a six core, but you can see, I mean, that's a good, you know, power, especially if that's a six core, that's more powerful than my computer. Uh, so to me, that's, those are good specs. So even though they're several years outdated now, that's just a very powerful, uh, you know, chipset to use. Memory's kind of low. I never again, I never had problems with memory until iOS 13. And you can see here, you know, I still don't have problems, but I, I do a lot on the iPad, and sometimes I have noticed it on here. And you can see that everything these last couple months have been and you can see everything other than doing this everything loads quick now you don't get 4k but i don't think apple devices support youtube in that just it's some codec thing or something I, but there's no problems I believe Mint throttles me whenever I try to watch YouTube. Try ESPN. This is definitely a more intensive app, lots of downloading. But you can see, I mean, you get in and out of these. And you can see, I, I, again, I never paid attention to this before, but you can see I'm basically almost out of RAM. It just seems weird that uh, I know iOS is always optimized, so it can take things that are you know, less used and prioritize the apps you still have open. So you can see that's still good. It seems to mostly be with the Google apps, which was a problem in the earlier versions of iOS on my iPad, and I still have that problem on my iPad even with the uh, 13.1.3 but it's still a very smooth experience so I don't think there's much more you need to see there I don't really game on my phone and maybe that offends some people but to me you know I just prefer using a console I just prefer the controller feel I'm not really into mobile gaming and the uh, you know, the camera works great it's still very good for what it is you have just the uh, that one zoom the video you can do up to 4K. I think it's only 30 frames. You can do 1080, 60. I think 4K, 30. Yeah, I think the photos are. Yeah, it takes them nice and quick. I, I've never had it's the best camera I've ever had in a phone. 
and most of my pictures I take are indoors, so they're not very well lit. I don't even know why I took this. I think I was trying to get something and try to be like nonchalant about it and probably look like twice the idiot. But you can see I didn't take time to really focus things or frame things. I think it's focused on this and not out here. But you can just see there's a good uh, balance. Nothing's blown out. You can still get in the dark here and nothing's overexposed or underexposed. So that was just a quick snapshot amateur style picture and it looks decent but I don't really use it for photography I use it to take some pictures when I sell stuff and for uh, YouTube videos basically now the microphones aren't good at all but I've been using a lav mic and I just use the uh, little dongle adapter that's about all there is I think to show on software and I've had it in this leather case this is midnight blue it's definitely darkened I used to have a couple, I'd always get like a saddle brown and a midnight blue, but this time I just settled with one. I don't really waste time switching them out. It's held up nicely. Taking a few impacts, they usually just kind of, you rub them a little bit and they pretty much blend in. So I mean, it's good, but you might notice the crack in it there. And I hate it because I, I always keep a screen protector glass one on the front. And this is the first phone I've had that was basically, like I said, brand new. I always keep them I've had since the 5. And I've never cracked the screen even when I drop them. You know, if the screen, they never crack. And then, of course, this one's all glass. And I never even dropped it that far. And it was in the case just on carpet from my bed. And it's just horribly cracked. I think it started here, and I had a few, and then I dropped it again, and it got worse, and then just all these weak points. Like, every time I take that back off, there's more and more, just because it's so weak. Maybe even just some flex from being in your pocket, or I don't know. But it's pretty bad. I'm not sure. There we go. And I should have put this glass protector on. I put it on after the fact. I should have just put one on before. I don't know if it would have helped. I just have it on now, so in case this would get jagged, it'll hold it all together. It's not going to, there's already so many weak points, it's not going to help. But that's too bad. I mean, it doesn't really matter to me, it's just going to hurt the resale value. And I don't know, it probably will hurt the water resistance, but I, I don't really ever find myself getting my phone submerged. It's, it's a shame too, because it's such a nice, especially like this like anodized you know, aluminum, this had, if it was just a regular 7 or prior before they had the glass, this would still be in great shape. Because if I was just manhandling it, the front would be cracked too. So I'm not sure why the back was weaker. I know the 11, they seem to be just so much better. And they have that frosted glass, so I wouldn't even mind not even using a case. Because it wouldn't show scratches like a clear, shiny surface would. So that's really too bad. But I don't really mind it too much. I keep it in the case. But it would have been nice you know, if it didn't do that. But that's how iPhones are now. They're all glass back. So it's kind of inevitable, unfortunately. But the phone still works well. All the buttons. So, I mean, there it is. Let me know if, if, you know, what I did or didn't do that was very good. I think you get the idea. I mean, if I showed you me playing a game, I don't play games on them. I don't know if that would help. I mean, it's a capable phone. It would probably drain the battery. Uh, I think just the app, like when you go to Instagram, you have the stories and all the ads and everything more. I think that just the more that apps progress and get more cluttered, the more it's going to drain the battery. Even if the battery health is still you know, near full capacity, the phone's still very fast. Uh, probably if you have a phone of this generation, you probably aren't like a big gamer on your phone. It's probably more the people that have the bleeding edge every single year that want to get the most out of it. But if you're like me and you're just using it for Instagram, I really don't use Facebook. I just use it for notifications when I sell stuff. Uh, maybe a little bit of texting, hardly ever. Mostly just for mobile uh, web browser, and sometimes I watch YouTube if I'm not on my iPad. It works great still. Maybe there's some bugs that are from iOS 13. Hopefully that'll be smoothed out in the future. 
it's still running well. You know it's going to be supported still for years to come. Uh, the, the, if you have that glass back, it's probably going to crack on it. Uh, that's too bad, but it doesn't really impede the performance of the phone. The cameras are still really good. You don't get Face ID. I really wouldn't even want it. I prefer Touch ID. I'm not having my face scanned, but that's just me. Uh, Touch ID is obviously very well fleshed out by this point in the, their phone, so this is probably about as good as it would ever get, and it's really the best way for security for me. So yeah, I've been doing wireless charging. I don't pay attention to it as much. I just set it there. Uh, when I was doing plugging in, I'd wait until it went into the red and then charge it overnight. Uh, now for almost a year now, I just put it on when it's like 70, 60, 50. Rarely goes below that now because just, I'll just say, well, I'm sitting here, I'll put it on the charger, and it charges much slower. So my battery health is still good. The apps are getting bigger and more cluttered. I think that lowers your battery life. And the milliamps of the new weren't even as good as what their current you know, iPhones are. So it still opens fast. It still is a good phone. It was well made. You might have a crack back, but if you have a case on it, I still think it's a great phone. Depends on the price. That's up to you and when you're watching it. But uh, if it's in your price range, it's definitely a good phone to get. So hopefully that showed you just what it's still capable of, and I'm very happy with it still. So thanks for watching, and you'll see me in the next one. Have a good one.